This is HighKeys1977.com and it's the first of the five sites I wanna show you guys in this video. When we scroll past, we see that we have this keyboard playing here as a 3D element. And as we scroll by, we see that we have all the different elements of this keyboard. Now, this is just one of the five sites that we're gonna to cover today, so stay tuned until the end to see some of the crazier sites I've got. But this just showcases how far you can go with web design and web development. Now, this is not the type of site that you should build if you're trying to highly optimize your e-commerce or your SaaS or whatever. This is a highly specialized website design and development thought to explain every inch and piece of this 3D product. We can see that when we keep scrolling, the wheels on this product turn, showing us that we have a lot of control at our fingertips. Or we have, for example, this speaker down here that shows us another piece. Or as we scroll past, we have all these different pieces and we can see how thin the keyboard is. So this is a great way to feature something that's a 3D product. If you're gonna create a 3D product in Blender or Cinema 4D or AutoCAD, you're able to export that and place it inside a Webflow inside a framer, inside of a lot of different, even custom coded websites, of course. And so you can have this kind of website experience for 3D objects. Now, again, if you're gonna do something like amazon.com for highly optimized e-commerce, then this is definitely not the kind of site that you wanna be doing. But it's cool to have unique layouts. It's cool to have an experience for users sometimes if it is the correct fit and you wanna give them that kind of experience. And you're not necessarily only relying on this specific website to sell your product. I'm sure that these people have a very sophisticated sophisticated way to sell the product online without only relying on the website. But anyways, as we scroll down, we have more content to consume. Down here, we have another video, which is better for the user to consume rather than an image because they get stuck in and they wanna see how the video develops and blah, 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 blah. But we can actually see the person using the product here, which is fantastic. As you scroll past, we have designed for precision aesthetics, redefining what a keyboard can be, and then get news and updates. So nothing here is about selling the product. I mean, you're selling the actual information of the product, but there's nothing here to necessarily buy it which is completely fine. So this website was made by hellohello.is, which we can cover their own website in another video if you guys want, but that's not what this is about. Next up is yolo.com, you only live once.com. That was quite an era. This site has an interesting piece. When we load in, we have number one, the logo of the site, which adds in as a Lottie file or some sort of animation. And then the file itself or the animation continues in the background, with this sort of glass effect with make a difference in the foreground as our hero header. So this is a pretty nice hero header to take a look at. Even if we don't know anything about the site, which I don't, we can see that it's a high effort site and makes me wanna keep looking down here. Now, I also wanna take a look at the font here, which will use a extension to do that. So I'm gonna go over here to my extensions, click on what font, and hover over this so it's grotesque which is a very nice font and that kind of solves my inquisition into that so anyways as we scroll past the hero header we've got a nice piece of text here with that font and i've done a lot of videos on picking the right font making sure that we're not going too crazy with fonts or always picking one or two to pair them correctly not going insane with it but anyways this grotesque here serves really well with the entire site because it's a font that you can use many times over and you can also use it as a kind of display font as they have here. We have this 3D carousel here with individual videos and I can tell that these are individual videos, not specifically one digital effect because I have this extension here that allows me to increase the video speeds of specific videos. And so we can see that this is an individual item, this is another one, this is an image, this is another image, so we can see that this and this is a specific kind of piece of content. Anyways, as we scroll past, we have this static section here, or the sticky section, that creates this circle around the YOLO ecosystem. We have, again, that same gradient glass effect, which we saw in the hero header, which kind of ties in the top and the bottom here, and then it shows us all the different things that these people are investing in or have in their portfolio, which is interesting to consider this a portfolio it's not necessarily a designer's portfolio. It's more like an investment group. But anyways, this is a great landing page to showcase an investment portfolio. And it doesn't need to be boring. I mean, we think of investments as kind of like you put money in, you get money out. But I think it's cool to showcase this level of importance in your landing page to either entice investors or show specific people what you guys do or what you're investing in. So this is a great website to take a look at. And yolo.com is the name. I'm gonna have links to everything in the description 
if you guys want to take a look. Then we've got wildyrifkin.com. I covered this site in a previous video, if that's not our already, but this is a site that recently won Framers Site of the Year Award. And what I think is really cool about it is that this is a portfolio site for a designer. And instead of showcasing all of the different skills that this person has as just simple words, they decided to have the hero header of the site as part of this keychain thing. So we have all the individual keychains as each individual skill that this person has. So we've got motion, we've got branding, editorial, photo works, and then down here we have illustration. So it's kind of like, I mean, I'm literally tilting my head here to look at all these different things. But as we scroll past, we see number one, who this person is, we can read more about them. We've got featured works, number one, number two, and number three, which kind of slot in as a folder. So it's still playing into this kind of vintage effect that we've got going on on the site. We have these physical folders, this archive, and then down here, we can click on the individual categories to look a little bit deeper. So we've got brand design, let's go click on that. And then we have that same keychain that we saw in the hero header acting as kind of like a checkpoint for this category. So branding, Dipsco, brand identity, Alstan, Coffee Works. I wanna see that because I'm thinking of opening a coffee shop. So this kind of work is, I mean, the way that we're actually showcasing the work itself is pretty common, right? We've got a title here, we've got the year, if it's branding, if it's editorial, whatever, a little description there, and then some high quality images. This is always really important, as high quality as possible. I would even prefer to be able to click on it and then it expands the whole thing like a light box. But either way, I mean, it's it's high quality enough. It doesn't need to be that, that, that much better. Anyways, and then down here, we can click on more works and we always have the option to change category and see, I don't know, for example, hues of harmony. And then again, the same thing, scroll down and then go down to the footer, which allows us to see the other the other pages. But anyways, on to the next one. Then we have airborne.studio. Now this is pretty similar to the first site that I covered. This is not the kind of site that you wanna be using for a super high converting e-commerce and you cannot mess anything up and blah, 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 blah. This is more just showcasing personality in a website. Websites can and most of the time are about converting and that is the case as well. But in the case of the studio, it's also about showcasing your personality because when you work with, with clients, it also needs to be a match of personalities, of energy, of vibes, whatever you want to call it. And if you are a super, I don't know, boring kind of company, this will not be what you want to look for. And that's completely fine. But then if you're a little bit more quirky and you have the money to spend on this kind of studio and it's a good fit, then this may even be a high converting asset to the hero header. And so that's a way of thinking about why you would even want to invest in this kind of animation or interaction. So that's one way to think about it. It's not always about converting and money, 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 although it is because it's, it's a business, but it's also about, I don't know, how does your site feel for the client? How does it feel for you? Are you proud of having this kind of hero header? Are you happy to show this to, to clients? You know, is it something like, hey, look what we have here, that kind of, adds in to your happiness of the website, which then can help conversions as well. So it's kind of like one big loop. But anyways, I could talk about this kind of stuff forever. This is all I wanted to showcase really for this site is this, this mouse interaction. And it's silly to, to think about it so much like that. But anyways, let's take a look at the rest of the site. We've got partnerships with another hero header interaction, which gives us this kind of 3D effect. And then when we hover over these different links, we've got the actual projects that we we can actually take a look at a little bit about the projects. We've got this GIF here or this GIF video, whatever you want to call it, which allows us to see more of the product. Now, I would like to see more images rather than this video personally, just so I can actually take a look. And I'm guessing that's what this is here. We can see more of the case study, but either way, I would like to see just super high quality images. That's all I'm really looking for when I'm going for, I mean, I guess like this, when I'm going for a studio and I'm looking at a studio to hire or to outsource some work from my agency for. So high quality images is all I'm ever really looking at. But anyways, these guys are working with some disgustingly big companies, so they don't need any advice from a YouTuber like myself. Anyways, work. Let's take a look here. Yeah. And these guys are, these guys are doing fine without me or my advice. So anyways, that will be the fourth one. And then the fifth one is quadrix.com. Another quirky little website. But I think this one's a little bit more for conversions if you want to look at it that way. Quadrix, your personal office space that can't read that, can't read that, can't read that, can't read that. But as we scroll past, meets all needs in one place. And let's see if we change to 250. What does that do? 
So we simulate mobile kind of, okay, so it might look a little bit different on mobile. But anyways, this is a container office company. So what they do is that they build these little offices that you can install in your backyard and it acts as a little oasis away from the screaming children in your home or the chaos. So you can kind of hide away from it a little bit. And I think that's, that's quite cool if you've got the money and space and time to spend on that kind of thing. It must be nice. So work here, we see all their, their different case studies. So we've got work, we've got chill out, We've got online meetings or hobbies. So that kind of shows all the different use cases for, for these little containers. But I think most people are gonna buy it as a little office, right? But it would be really cool to have like a gym in there or just, I don't know, honestly, yeah, just the gym is what I'm thinking, or maybe like to play games or whatever. But yeah, I think it's cool to have this kind of site where you have an interactive way and a 3D, a 3D element to the site to actually see more of the product if you have a, a physical product. It's, it's such a hack to have a physical aspect to a site if you have a physical product in the real world. Down here, we've got an all-inclusive setup, sustainable and safe. So just pieces of the puzzle that kind of helps you be more and more interested in the product itself. When you hover over, we've got this animation and then read more. So we've got the lights down here the system, but I would, I mean, this would be above and beyond, but imagine if you could grab it and actually rotate it. I'm guessing you can do that in the customization, but still in the hero could also be cool. If you, when you scroll, it rotates and then that shows the words rather than waiting for it to be all the way at the top, just a piece of my two cents. Anyways, this is super cool. So roof, let's go ahead and add in a roof. Wow. Super cool. I love animations. Sides, solid panels. I'm just doing this a little bit random here. And but let's see, why not? Side two, side three, cool. Let's do light, LEDs. Nice, that's so nice. And you can also hover in the inside. Subtotal, 50 bands, why not? Frame, let's go for black. Summary, and then it gives us that. So this is super, super cool. And I love these kind of interactions with physical products. And I wish I had a physical product so I could have an excuse to build something like this, but I don't, but I might just do it anyways for funsies. That could be a cool video as well for you guys. If you guys are interested in that, actually let me know because I'm running out of ideas here. But yeah, let me know what you guys think about these five sites that I showcased. They're all a little bit different, but I think are all very interactive in their own specific ways. So thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.